The reason why we are here today is to actually uh, enjoy some pizza and maybe party tonight, but as well, uh, we are here to celebrate like the first recorded commercial transaction backed by or uh, involving Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin, in my eyes, has grown so much bigger than just the coin. Actually, for me, it has really reshaped the way how uh, I see the money, society, and uh, finance as well. But best of all, in my eyes, it's uh, providing a lot of ways how to increase pers both personal and the financial freedom. Uh, first thing that I would mention is Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer -peer payment system that allows uh, direct transactions between individuals, eliminating the need for any intermediary. Many of you in this room are probably working on the Lightning Network that makes peer-to-peer -peer payments even faster, cheaper, and easier to scale, even more private. Secondly, I would point your attention to the fact that to the decentralized nature of, of Bitcoin and uh, its censorship-resistant properties that make it an uh, appealing store of value for many of us. But today, let me point your attention and uh, I would like you to consider another uh, exciting use case uh, for Bitcoin and it is uh, use as a, as a collateral. Uh, collateral, in a sense, is, uh, or a notion of collateral is the backbone of the finance. It basically refers to uh, asset or the property that is pledged or provided as a security or guarantee for some kind of transaction. This is a, like, a general understanding of uh, collateral. For example, in the context of mortgage, the real estate on uh, uh, such as uh, flat or house, is uh, securing the loan tra transaction that is behind. And without such a collateral, the loan itself would not be possible. Uh, you could actually use almost any asset as collateral. You could use your TV screen or gold teeth in a pawn shop to secure your cash loan, for example. But the Collateral use is not limited to the realm of uh, lending. Actually, uh, during my career as an energy trader, we used to use like West uh, type, like different types of collateral, ranging from cash currencies to even exotic stuff like uh, CO2 emission allowances. Um, uh, maybe it's a good time to consider the, the, the possibilities that Bitcoin can bring if we use it as a collateral. Because, I guess, uh, it offers some unique qualities, uh, such as uh, it's highly liquid, uh, it's traded 24-7 all around the world, the price of Bitcoin is given at any time, it's digital in nature and global, truly global asset, but what really sets it apart from different kinds of collateral, like traditional ones like stocks and bonds and gold teeth and whatever, is the fact that it is uh, programmable in a sense. This allows to eliminate the need for the centralized custodian. Instead, we could actually lock Bitcoin in an on-chain smart contract and considerably cut the counterparty risk that is uh, involved in such a transaction. Many people might argue that the high volatility of Bitcoin price, the fact that Bitcoin price is going up and down like crazy, is somehow limiting its potential and its use as a collateral. I would like, you, I would like to offer alternative perspective on that. Think of Bitcoin as a tool that can actually help you navigate through the volatility of your daily life. Think of Bitcoin as uh, your private pool of liquidity that you can actually access anytime you want. 
imagine a situation where you unexpectedly need funds to cover, for example, healthcare expenses or your kid's education or maybe Lambo or uh, some investment opportunity. How about you use your Bitcoin without selling it tax free uh, while still keeping your Bitcoin and potentially benefiting from the increase in its price? How about you consider taking a peer to peer loan settled in a fiat currency or eventually stable coin? Well, to be completely clear here, I'm not advocating to, uh, to hold fiat currency by any chance. What I'm suggesting you to consider is pretty much the contrary. What I propose is to consider creating actually liability on the fiat currency. That would mean that you actually hold a short position on, on the fiat. That would mean that you would potentially benefit from the erosion of the purchasing power of the fiat currency. If I am in this kind of situation when I need some funds for whatever makes my life better at the time, I ask myself a question, should I really spend my pristine digital property, my Bitcoin, or maybe it would be wiser to use borrowed cash that I can actually borrow at some 5% a year, keep my Bitcoin benefiting from its potential price increase, while having a short position on the fiat at the same time? Well, uh, the, I don't have the answer for you, but I think that's the good question one should ask when facing such a situation. Uh, to unlock some of the potential that we see in the Bitcoin and its use as a collateral, we designed the, what we call Firefish protocol and the Firefish platform that uh, allows for the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, lending backed by Bitcoin. And this is our framework. No custody. Instead of centralized custodian, we rather use on-chain smart contracts. Peer-to-peer -peer means that we really think that the free interaction of the users is much more powerful than any centralized lender. We decided to use Bitcoin native tech and components that are already uh, part of the Bitcoin stack, such as multi-six, partially signed Bitcoin transactions, and time locks. And all the uh, design of the system or, 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 or of the protocol and, uh, and implementation code is or will be open source in the near future. Moving forward with uh, Firefish uh, protocol and the platform, uh, our, our goal is to pro provide power powerful tools for Bitcoiners that they can basically use in their daily lives and leverage the power of Bitcoin and its use as a collateral. And this is our vision. We see all these use cases can be done on the back of these relatively simple financial primitives. If somebody is interested in the technical part of our solution and how we design the protocol, I encourage you to take part of our uh, workshop that will uh, happen tomorrow, 11 o'clock, in the Institute of Crypto Anarchy. You can also find us on firefish.io. We appreciate any feedback, both technical and non-technical. Uh, you can also access the prototype platform over there and try it yourself and spread the world. Thank you. Definitely some questions, but I start with one. Um, so the argument for uh, level two solutions uh, side chains and the lot we have, we have liquid, we have um, RSK, we have different things happening in where people are doing Bitcoin back loans. Um, it seems to be that partially signed Bitcoin transactions were really sort of like the, 
the leap forward mentally and, and technically to do that with all the without the additional overhead uh, that we find in using uh, sidechain and level two solutions? Would that be a fair uh, assessment that this is essentially what unleashed the ability to move away all the crust and just do it right at the base money layer? Well, basically the, the important des uh, design decision we took is to use the on-chain Bitcoin. We don't like the Bitcoin to be wrapped or transferred to any chains through some, uh, some federation setup. I, I'm not saying it's not the solution for everybody, but, uh, but I think there is a place for the platform that utilizes on-chain Bitcoin for the security reasons. <laughs> well, there's definitely no, there's <laughs> definitely no argument about that. We're just, okay. we're just, we're, we're moving in that direction. So if I, as a user, want to actually access some, some, some dirty fiat, what are the, what are the payment rails for me to receive that dirty fiat using Firefish? Currently, the interaction is purely peer-to-peer. -peer, so our user, uh, users, uh, if, if you want to, uh, to have a settlement in fiat, you will receive the fiat payments directly to your bank account from your counterparty. We are not, not touching the fiat at this moment. Like this is open for the future, how we will do it. I, I'm saying this is the prototype and currently the settlement happens peer to peer. So how do I, how do I access a counterparty uh, either on, the, on either side of the trade? You, you, you get provided with count your counterparty's bank details and you just make wire transfer. And that's done via messaging client, or so which communication channel am I using? Through, through, through our platform. Like through, through the platform. Th yeah, through the platform. There are two parts of what we do. One is the protocol, and second one is platform, web-based pr platform that you can access on firefish.io. Right, but the protocol is one that you can have competing implementations that don't have your UI, UX, or... Or yes. Pro protocol consists of the core Bitcoin library that is uh, constructing transactions and addresses and, and such, and a lot of other stuff that is not Bitcoin related is uh, on the platform. Okay, and so we've also had Leah speaking about Flesk today, a uh, peer-to-peer platform for, for doing, do you see, so implementations happening in wallets, where do you see this moving beyond you know, just the proof of concept and the platform that you're offering now with the protocol. How do you see the expansion for, for collateral, for users to access collateral using the protocol? Oh, sorry? I'm, I'm, I'm asking you if you're seeing like integration into wallets coming in the future for this because this is something that we see. Well, well yes, that would be a way. Uh, like we designed the protocol in a way that uh, it's uh, easy to in, uh, uh, interact with the protocol or with the system with any kind of external wallet. Like, but it makes a little bit of the complications. Uh, but I would strongly recommend you to uh, to attend the technical workshop because I cool. <laughs> I would uh, <laughs> I, I don't think it's reasonable to go in, into the technical details. Right. So start with a few questions. Does anybody else have a question? Thank you. I liked the uh, let's let's use uh, hashtag uh, short fiat. Uh, I think uh, I, I really liked it. And my question relates to that. Uh, you showed the slide with Bitcoin backed everything, education, uh, consumption, all the uh, all the things. Uh, what do you think would happen if significant percentage, let's say thirty percent of Bitcoiners? were actually using Bitcoin this way as a collateral and never selling it. What would this world look like if we, if we just stopped, uh, you know, paying uh, um, uh, by, by spending Bitcoin, but just by locking it and shorting fiat? Well, I think it might have like few implications. One probably is that the less people will use Bitcoin on the, actually as it was intended, on the peer-to-peer -peer basis. So I'm aware that this concept is pretty much, um, it's going the direction of hold the Bitcoin and don't, don't touch it ever. And it's a little bit conflicting with this uh, like circular economies and, and, uh, uh, and this kind of stuff that a lot of people want to build. Uh, I think every, everybody can decide like what they, or what they value on the Bitcoin. I think we use Bitcoin for different reasons. 
many of us use Bitcoin for different reasons. And I think the, the store of value or collateral, it's quite valuable for many people, including me. Uh, so where you are probably pointing is whether it's not gonna like, undermine the grassroots, grassroots economy uh, on the Bitcoin. Maybe yes. What I would maybe I'm point out. Just, uh, uh, I'm just thinking like what would be what would be the implication for the use cases. I'm not saying anything bad. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, so I'm thinking uh, if people stopped viewing it as you know sound money and all all these narratives and said okay this is a uh, collateral and uh, I'm holding this hard money and I'm shorting fiat like uh, maybe it would have a quite positive price implications. There will be less supply uh, of Bitcoin for sale. Uh, basically, you're printing money. It's, uh, it's a loan, so, uh, so you're basically expanding the use of fiat, so it will probably cause a little bit of inflation. And if a significant percentage of Bitcoin was used this way, I think it would be very interesting. I'm just curious, uh, what, what would it mean? Yeah, I guess if it is a re reasonable chunk of the supply, it would definitely have a price impact on Bitcoin. If uh, holders are not selling their Bitcoin, I think there is much higher chance that the price will go to the moon. But this is not the point we are trying to achieve. We don't want to, you know, uh, to push people to pump up the price or anything of this kind. I just guess this can be really useful for, for, for many people. Uh, that's, uh, well, what else? Like, maybe one thing that would be interesting is that, uh, like, speaking of price action, that if you basically have a lot of stop losses, because if you lock Bitcoin in a smart contract, at some point you need to sell the Bitcoin to cover for the loan, and if it is a big amount, then the price action could have been quite choppy on the downside. This is what I would say as a trader. So this is another implication of if this uh, concept is widely adopted. Once again, we don't want to push people to use fiat by any chance. Uh, if there is, <laughs> short fiat is better. But for normal use cases, I would love to see the some stable repre digital representation of value, call it stable coin or not, that is basically not uh, tracking uh, the, the centralized currency price, but something more rational, like a price index or something of this kind, that would be much more useful than the stable coins that are uh, pegging, uh, uh, that are pegged uh, on the dollars. Um, so you mentioned that the payment of the fiat would actually be peer-to-peer. -peer. So I would basically take out a loan from another guy and that guy would transfer the money to my bank account, right? So I, I think this is like all the other platforms that do lending, Bitcoin back lending, right? They usually take um, stable coins, right? So they don't use actual fiat. So I think exactly. this would be the first time where this is actually happening, which is really interesting. Now, what's your vision regarding like conflict resolution, right? The guy doesn't pay back the loan. Like, do they send you a screenshot or like, how, how, how do you th think that's gonna work? Yeah, this is ex uh, exactly like pain in the ass when, uh, when we, at, at this moment, when the interactions are peer to peer, because believe or not, flat, I mean, fiat uh, payment system is, is totally broken. I mean, I don't know if you, try to, s uh, to send wire transfer over the SWIFT. And what can happen, and it happens quite often, is that you send your money and they don't appear on the other side. We call it like SWIFT limbo. And they suddenly appear on one side or another. So we actually, for, the, for these situations, we developed something like an escalation procedure where you need to provide us with uh, bank statements, like both sides, if the status of the payment is not clear, both, both sides need to provide us with, uh, with uh, uh, statements from, from the bank. What is, uh, from the user experience perspective, is not ideal. We require you to do it like, in a, like every five days or something till the resolution is not uh, ready. But that's the tax we need to pay for the peer-to-peer -peer interactions at this moment. 
what sort of liability position does that uh, put you in? Where is the what is the legal so place in this transaction? Well, it's it's a peer to peer loan. It's like but uh, if you're saying that you provide uh, a dispute resolution, yeah, that you're as, you're assuming some sort of part in the like in, in a transaction that has gone wrong. Yeah. So. Yeah. Dispute resolution is not resolu uh, we, we don't hold any discretion in in the resolution. It's basically step by step process that is encoded into the legal agreement that is backing your your transaction, and Firefish is just following the procedure to actually make the resolution. But there is we are not a court. We are not judging like who is wrong and who is wrong. It's just pure procedure that is happening with some result. And it's just part of the of the agreement that is uh, the user agreement that I click on when I create a you transaction using the protocol on your. Yes, platform. you actually basically sign an agreement with your counterparty directly. So this is also a legal title. If if some money appears at your b uh, bank account, there is a chance that some anti-money laundering officer w will uh, ask you where did that uh, that come from, and you have a legal title. Uh, confirming that you you uh, have been uh, getting a peer-to-peer -peer loan that is completely legal, no problem. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you.